Miyagi Prefecture Police announced on June 23, 2021, that they had arrested two men and one woman in connection with a heinous crime. The crime? Uploading a movie summarization to YouTube in July of last year. Fast Ega, or Fast Movie as it's known in Japan, is a 10 minute or less cut of a movie. These three are now facing up to 10 years in prison in Japan. So why can Americans upload this kind of content to YouTube, apparently with impunity, but in Japan, if you do this, they might throw you in the slammer? Let's discuss fair use in Japan on Rogue Upload. In the US, quite a number of channels specialize in movie recaps. Even with whiz-bang titles added, these channels pretty clearly violate copyright by using clips from the actual movies. The channels exist despite the fact that the merest hint of similarities between songs can result in years of litigation in court. The arrest in Japan and the complete lack of them in America highlight the differences in fair use or fair dealing in other jurisdictions that creators face when uploading from different jurisdictions to the same platform. So why aren't Americans being thrown into prison? One reason is the fair use doctrine in America is quite broad. It would, however, be incorrect to say Japan has no fair use. It does. Japan spells out fair use exceptions to copyright in the text of the law. My use of the clip before would have been covered under Article 32 in Japan's copyright law. In Japan, you can't really trot out fair use as a defense for your infringement. The Japanese legal system is based on civil law. Courts do not generally have to consider previous judgments when they render their rulings. The copyright law as written is what is considered when prosecutors look to charge someone. This isn't a video on the Japanese legal system, so please forgive the rudimentary summary here. In the US, Canada, and other countries using common law, creators can rely on previous judgments to dissuade lawsuits over a particular transformation of copyrighted work. To quote Wikipedia, a legal doctrine is a framework, set of rules, procedural steps, or test often established through precedent in common law, through which judgments can be determined in a given legal case. A court in the U.S. may use previous rulings on fair use to determine if something else is fair use. My understanding is that in the U.S. it is fairly well established that transformative versions of copyrighted works that are not a substitution for the full work are covered by the fair use doctrine there. This is not a guarantee, though. In Japan, creators maybe have an easier time of determining what is fair use. The text of the law and opinions on it published by the Japanese ministries and industries associations illuminate what is permissible. This clarity is a double-edged sword. Creators in Japan know that skirting the limits of the law is not something to do on a whim. The public in Japan is generally pretty unsympathetic to those charged with crimes in Japan. Prosecutors generally have a pretty free pass from society to charge anyone short of a litter of puppies. Unless you're an artist like Megumi Igarashi, artistic integrity is not something to get sent to jail for. An important question to ask is, should this even be a criminal matter? The victim there really is one, is the pocketbook of a company. Well, the moniker Japan Inc. has stuck around because it's a convenient shorthand to describe the relationship Japanese lawmakers have with companies. A long-standing political theory in Japan is that companies should be subservient to the civil service, and in return, the state will visit balance upon those that interfere with business interests. As such, copyright violation, usually a civil matter between companies and or individuals in Western countries, 
is something the state itself deals with in Japan. CODA, a Japanese anti piracy and international distribution organization, has pushed a narrative that domestically that in a year, 55 past EGA channels posting 2,100 videos cost the industry a whopping 95.6 million yen. That's about 860 million US dollars. The claim damages are a Extraordinary and are a bit hard to believe without extraordinary evidence. It is, however, not their job to provide a detailed analysis of the harm to a market that could, you know, inconveniently contradict their narrative. <laughs> yes, the three involved with the channel in Japan could have been smarter about it. They could have kept their videos short. Limited their content to companies that granted permission and protested against the law. They didn't. As a result, CODA has a nice, tidy narrative of greedy content pirates injuring a suffering sector. I understand that it is frustrating for content creators to see people ripping off their copyrighted works. I've had people rip off my content. This attempt to send three people to prison for 10 years for a 10 minute video seems designed to send a message. My concern is that this is the wrong way to go about sending it. As a result, the message is probably undelivered or lost in translation outside of Japan. So, what do you think? Is this a real overreach by prosecutors in Japan to try to send? Creators uploading content to YouTube to jail? Or, well, do recap、uh, channels deserve it and they should all be sent to prison? Well, what do you think?、Uh, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm Matthew for Rogue Upload. Thanks for watching this video. As always, be sure to like and subscribe and have a good day.